Hey guys, Mr. Todd here, and today we're going to do a virtual constant velocity buggy cart lab. So this is a constant velocity buggy cart, and you turn it on and this thing goes, it can climb walls and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, so what we're going to do today is use this to analyze graphing and 1D kinematics. So what I've done is I've set up a lab in front of me, and I have a zero starting point, and then every 20 centimeters I've placed a graduated cylinder with a marking on it to indicate the distance the cart will travel. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to figure out how long it takes this cart to reach each one of those distances. Now how we're going to do that, in the background you'll see I have a MacBook playing oh, I'm with, with a stopwatch. Now it's going to start at 10 seconds because I don't have a way to remotely start and stop this, the, uh, the timer while letting this go at the same time. So we're just going to have to do a little, little bit of math. So here's the lab. Hi, this is Coach Todd, and today we're going to walk through our data we just collected for the constant velocity cart lab. So buggy cart lab. So what we need to do is you need to go open up, oops, you need to go to Google, and we need to go to Google Sheets. Now Google Sheets is the Google version of Microsoft Excel. So they're very similar and they work pretty much the same same way. You need to make a new sheet. Okay, so what we're going to do is, in this sheet, we need to make some data points. So we're going to do, if you look at the lab, it says to graph the object's distance versus the time. Now, please remember when doing this, I like to be very organized. I always put the units for whatever you're putting in right here. I think it also has speed. Use per second. You always put the units in the actual... Uh, description right here. You never actually put them in the cell otherwise it won't translate. And if you read properly it tells you to do it every 20 centimeters. Well every 20 centimeters is just 0.2 meters. So it's 0.4 and then Google has this great feature where you can just drag it down. Okay how I did that was example if I, if I don't want to just keep adding you know physical inputs I just copy all these or not like copy but just highlight in this little blue box right here I just drag it down to the appropriate distance okay and obviously at zero meters the object isn't moving so we're gonna go zero seconds and the speed is also zero all right now what we need to do next is to analyze the video we did and this is the video I just captured and notice the time running in the background it starts at 10 seconds so at 10 seconds that's when the actual start point is so that's gonna be our zero mark and let's just see and input our data points into this. So right there, at about 20 centimeters, you can see that's about 10.72. So if you have any, if you have any calculator, you can pull it out. So 10 minus, or 10.72 minus uh, 10 gives us 0 0.72 seconds. So 0 0.72 seconds. So I'm going to put that in here. Now these aren't going to be 100% correct, and this is just due to um, I guess parallax angle here, but we're just going to get a good guess, okay? So I'm going to start and stop this at every increment. That's 11.23. So you take 11.23 and minus that from 10. That gives me 1.23 seconds. I'll put that in right here. Seconds. And then I keep going to 60. I can kind of back it up a little bit. Oops. Just to get accurate, oops, I get 11, was that 11.65? So do 11.65 minus 10, and that gives you 1.65, okay? Oops. So 1.65 seconds, okay? And we'll continue to do the same thing. about 12 seconds looks like so that's two seconds overall Oop, I got a little that's not good it's exactly 12.5 seconds so that's 2.5 seconds overall and again okay, these are guesstimations and that's ooh, what is that It's like this right at 13 seconds. Yeah, like right at 13 seconds. That's at three seconds. And then here. 
we get 13.5 seconds. So that's 3.5 seconds. Okay, and then we can go back and we can just double check these numbers as well. Oh, that's pretty good. So if we see here, I'm, making, I'm just making sure I dropped it right at 10 seconds. Looks like I'm a little off. About two. So that looks like I'm about, I'm still trying to recheck my numbers there. I'm about 1.65 seconds. So, so it doesn't really hurt. Sorry, it's a 0.65 seconds to go back and just double check your numbers. Make sure everything looks good. This doesn't hurt. So that's, you know, 1.1 seconds. Yes, yeah, so like 1.1. So again, I'm just kind of double checking and making sure these numbers uh, are 100 percent so it doesn't 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 hurt to double check yep 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 okay so now that we have that we can actually do something in Excel where we can actually graph these okay so graphing in Excel is pretty simple so all we need to do is just highlight the things you want to graph and actually if you want to find your speed um, Excel can actually do it for you um, if, you, if you hit equals on the actual key, that means make an equation. So remember, speed is just distance over time, so let's click distance, backslash divided by our time cell, and hit enter. And those are our actual velocities. So that's pretty cool. So you can actually, again, instead of just click equals, that means to make an equation, I click on that cell, divided by this cell. So that means A3 divided by B3. Well, A3 is distance and B3 is time. So speed is distance over time. You click enter. And if you don't want to do that for each one, you can click the blue little box again and just drag it down. So what's interesting is we're seeing a speed about 0 0.3, 0 0.36, 0 0.36, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 seconds. So that's meters per second. So we're getting a pretty consistent speed here. And the first one, while we're deviating so much, I'm assuming it's due to my reaction time and a little bit of parallax. That's where, you know, um, the angle changes due to perspective. So let's actually graph this. If you're graphing the objects speed versus time, all you have to do is select what you want to graph, and we go to insert a chart. And obviously you don't want a column chart, so we go click, and the thing that we use a lot in physics is the scatter chart. All right, and here, notice, the best thing you have to notice is your x-axis are flipped, okay? So they're flipped, so then we need distance in the y and time. So one way around that is just to simply, you can copy these times. Now, whenever you paste these, sometimes you put paste special values only. And if I'm going a little fast, make sure you can rewind this video and go back. So I'm going to right click, paste special, values only. So I just flip these two. And then you insert the data. For some reason, they, uh, they want it, um, I guess they want y, x, y. And I don't want a line. I want to scatter. And there it is. And this is our actual distance first time graph. So that's really nice. Okay. So what this means is you're going to have to understand and answer some questions about this, about what's the shape of this graph. Okay. So in that, um, the lab on Schoology, if you remember you go to Schoology, the lab is going to ask you some questions about this. Okay. So make sure you kind of graph this. And like I said, if I went kind of fast, make sure you kind of um, go back and look at how I did this. And you can also graph the object speed versus time. So again, if you want to copy that, you copy it, pay special values only in time, pay special values only, and then you can actually graph the object speed versus time doing the exact same thing. Okay, so again, this lab, whenever you look at it, it's going to ask you to answer some questions about this graph. Okay, so that is actually how you construct the graph. And this is actually the constant velocity buggy cart. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. All right. I hope this helps, guys. See ya.